Welcome to section 4, Bitcoin Data Analysis. In this section, we'll explore and analyze the tremendous amount of data being generated in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Welcome to the first video of this section, Manipulate and Visualize Bitcoin Price Data. In this video, we're going to get, clean, manipulate, explore and visualize Bitcoin price data. We'll learn how to prepare your setup for data analysis. We'll get, read in and clean the price data. And we will explore, manipulate and visualize the cleaned up data. We first need to install some Python libraries for this demo. We'll be installing Pandas module for reading in data and also doing exploratory analysis. We'll be installing Matplotlib for creating plots and charts. And we'll be installing Jupyter Notebooks as they are the best for this kind of work which involves data analysis. To install these modules, you need to open your command line program. In the command line, to install pandas, execute command pip install pandas. Similarly, to install matplotlib, execute command pip install matplotlib. And for Jupyter, execute pip install Jupyter. Once you have finished installing the required modules, launch the Jupyter Notebook by executing command Jupyter Notebook. This will open up a new browser window or a tab where it will display the list of files which are already there from the folder where you have executed the command Jupyter Notebook. Choose to create a new Python 3 notebook. We will start with importing the necessary modules first. Let's import pandas to enable us to read in the data and start exploring it. We'll also import matplotlib for drawing plots from the data. We need to set some options for pandas and matplotlib. The first option we will set is called option mode chain assignment none. This is to make sure that the operations for the cleanup which we are going to do on the pandas data frame objects we want them to happen on the original data frames, not on a copy. We will explain this later in the notebook. We'll also set the matplotlib to visualize and display all the charts right in the notebook. The price data we have is from coindesk.com shown here. It is available for download for all for free. We have downloaded the data in a CSV format and we will read this data inside our notebook using pandas. It's a CSV file, so we will use the read CSV method from pandas. What we have got here is the data in a pandas data object called a data frame. Data frame is a tabular data format. Let's print out some records to see how it looks. We can do that by calling a method called head on the price data frame. So we have two columns, date and close price for the Bitcoin in USD for that day. We also have a default index for the rows starting from zero, which was inserted by the pandas by default while reading in the data. We might not need this and we'll remove it later. Let's get some top level information about this data. We do that by calling method info on it. Okay, so we have 2,592 records. We have two columns, date and close price. Date has 2,592 non-null records of type object, which basically means the date field has been read as a text. We would have to change it to a proper date time format later. We have the close price as a numeric float type, which is fine. It has only 2,590 non-null records, which are two records lesser than the date field. We need to investigate this. Earlier, we saw how to display some records from the top by using method head. Let's do the same for the records from bottom. We do this by calling the method tail. It shows us that the last two records should not exist here as they are not date or price. We need to remove those before proceeding with further analysis. We see that the close price has NAN values, which means it has missing values. We can use this fact to remove these two records from the data frame. We call drop any method on the price, which will remove the records that have one or more of the columns as null or missing values. 
remember we are just removing it from the data frame price in this notebook and not from the csv file from which we read the data from let's look at the bottom rows again to see if the records we wanted to remove have really been removed and we see that they have been in fact removed another data cleaning task we need to do is convert the date column from a object or text format to date time format we use pandas to date time method for the same Here we are asking the to date time method to convert the date field of price data frame and we are supplying the format also and we are assigning back the date field back to the data frame. This is the reason we earlier set the chain assignment equal to none because we wanted to make the changes back to the original data frame. We will call info method again to see whether our data cleanup has an impact. We see that the date field is now a date time format as we wanted and there are no non-null records in the data now we also need to set the index to the date column and remove the date column as a separate column this will help us running some interesting queries on the date data here we are setting the index to date column here we are deleting the date column as a separate column since we already set it up as an index and we see that the date column is an index and not a separate column anymore now the data cleanup is done we can start some data exploration task we can use pandas date time capabilities to run some interesting queries for example if we want to get all the records from a particular year we just have to pass that year to the data frame inside square brackets here we have the price data from the year 2010 we can also specify if we want the data from a particular date. Here we have the Bitcoin price in USD from the date 1st August 2017. We can also specify if we want the data from a particular period between certain dates. Here we are asking for data only from 1st August 2017 onwards. We can also get some statistical information using pandas methods. For example, to get the minimum price from this data set, we can use min method. To get maximum, use dot max. We can also get a whole bunch of statistical information in one go using the describe method. Okay, so next we will do some data visualization. It's very easy to start creating plots from data using pandas and matplotlib. To plot the whole data, we will call the plot method on the price data frame. And we get a nice plot where x-axis is the date field and the y-axis is the price data over the years. We can also zoom in on a certain time period. For example, to plot the data from 2017 only, we will first select the data only from 2017 and then call the plot method on this subset of data like this. Now we have a plot for only the data from price data from 2017 onwards. In this video, we learned how to get, clean, manipulate, explore and visualize Bitcoin price data. We learned how to prepare our setup for data analysis. We saw how to get, read in and clean the price data. We learned how to explore, manipulate and visualize the cleaned up data.